All right, guys. Well, my new heads came in. I'm about to check out the quality of these things, and so far they're very well packaged. And that's getting me all excited. I've heard nothing but good things, or only one bad thing about these heads, and it looks like that they need to be finished machined on this surface here. But right now I'm looking at it, and it looks really nice. So I'm looking at the heads now, and there's kind of a little bit of oddball things, like right there. But, like a little nick right there. But I can see what somebody might say, like it's like they stopped the machining process right in there. But as far as I can tell, that's a perfectly flat surface. There's no ridge there. There's no nothing. So one thing I might do on these aluminum blocks is all these sharp edges here, just chain for them real quick. I won't touch the cylinders, but like these, the water jackets and whatnot, I might. Uh, well, this is the first one. I One of two is looking awesome. As far as what I can tell right now, looking at these cylinder heads, they are very, very nice cylinder heads for what I paid. Now, could they be ported? Could they be polished? Absolutely. And I still see some of the casting stuff in there. But as of right now, I'm not going to worry about it too much. I might take a Dremel out or get my Dremel out with a long bit and just kind of clean up the inside of the bores. I'll show you. So you do have a little bit of remains of the casting in there. A little bit on every single cylinder or every valve. But you know what, 30 minutes with the Dremel, you could probably clean this all up. I think I might just before I get ready to put them in and then wash them up and uh, assemble them. So let's go and compare them to what I got out in the garage. So you can see all this combustion chamber area right in here. It starts here. That's flat, but it starts here and it works itself all the way around like that. On these heads, this area is curved in it's got this ledge right here and it's got this other one right here that's going to make a huge difference in how much compression I run in this motor and uh, come over here and look at the intake ports <clears throat> not that great They're, they get narrow. Come over here, and these ones are nice and wide. Should actually get the caliper out and compare them. Hold on one second. So, the intake starts at about 1.082, and on these ones, about 1049 10, 1050 for how wide they are in height the intake runners on this the old one measures 201 and on the new one it measures 210 so that's quite a bit of difference right there what about the exhaust The exhaust is about 140 on the new one. And on the old one, if I can get it turned around without knocking everything over. Uh, it's pretty similar. It's 137 or 134. So, I mean, the point is, is that A, we're flowing more volume with higher compression in the new aluminum heads. And B, they're a hell of a lot lighter. I could pick up one of these aluminum heads with one hand. I wouldn't even try to do that with the cast iron heads. So half the part of drag racing is keeping your vehicle light, as light as possible. 
And that's why I went ahead and said, you know what, if we're going to do this, let's just go ahead and buy new heads. We'll try out these. We'll try out the eBay special heads and see what happens. And if they work good, then hey, everybody else knows that they're good to go and buy them. Snatch them up while you can. But uh, anyway, the garage is a mess right now. I uh, This weekend, I pulled the transmission out of the truck. I'll show you. And there it sits right there. I got the com common oil all over the ground. I mean, I who doesn't? But I was intentionally leaving the engine and transmission in the truck just so that way if anybody who ever wanted to come and buy it would come up and say, oh yeah, let me test drive it. They could test drive it. And then they would say, oh, okay, yeah, it does, it does run. That's great. I'll pay you what you want for them, you know. But, and this guy couldn't because he had a broken down car or whatever. And, uh, so he asked if I could deliver it. I said, yeah, I'll make it for an extra fee. But then he fell through. I got it out Sunday morning. I asked him, hey, I'm ready to go. Where you at? And he said, cool, man. And then never gave me an address. So, real cool. If you're going to be on Craigslist, Facebook, Marketplace, or uh, offer up. Just don't be a flake about things. Be straight up with people. Uh, I'm going to grab the other cylinder head, bring it out here, take some more measurements, and then start uh, looking for a kit for these heads. Because it's not too far that I'm going to be throwing new bearings in here. Washing this block up tonight is probably my next chore. And then uh, buying new bearings. And polishing out this crank a little bit and I'll take some footage of that so you guys can see how I polish the crank basically just take a little bit of 400 grit sandpaper and some uh, like PB blast or something coat the bearing the race with it and then a shoelace all the way around it and run it back and forth about 10 or 12 times just to smoothen it out and the reason why I do that on these cranks is because there's fine little grooves in there and if you think about it you got your car tire it has tread in it or grooves and it's going through a puddle well what happens all that water displaces up into the tread so that way your tire can make contact with the pavement and keep traction well with this application you want the complete opposite you want that thin layer of oil riding between your bearings so a quick little polish this one's in pretty good shape the other one for the now aluminum block uh, it was bad enough that I had the machine shop uh, turn it 10 thou so and if I had to I could run that crank in the 355 because they're all Chevy parts they're interchangeable I don't think I'll need to I'll just run with this one and I'll save that one for uh, a 383 build probably later this year I don't know it all gets expensive but overall eBay heads, I think, are worth the money. I can't wait to get the tr the motor put together. I can't wait to get it all running and at the track just to see how much of a difference it makes. And if I get enough comments in there, maybe I'll uh, throw my old heads on the motor just to see how much of a time difference it makes. Maybe. It's a lot of work. It's a couple extra gaskets and whatnot, but that might be a fun fun video to shoot just to actually see that hey everything else the same the only thing that's changed is the heads and uh see how how much how what the time difference is in the truck but anyway we'll catch you guys later you take it easy and uh maybe i'll put some washing the motor in this video i don't know so like a lot of people use that expensive oil dry stuff to clean up spilt engine oil on the floor. Now I just got done pulling the transmission out of this and it made a hell of a mess on the floor and that's pretty typical. So instead of springing for the oil dry stuff, I get pet pride. It's about a quarter of the cost and it works just as great. There's one secret using it though and let me show you. Bit. Let me go. 
and you just rub it into the floor with your foot. See, the problem is it comes too chunky, so you just got to work a little extra harder with it, but it works. Everywhere you see oil, you scrub, and you twist, like this. Let me sweep this up, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, look at that. That right there is what the floor looked like. That's where it is. Hell, just for one more go of it, I'll do this spot and then I'll video it. Now the only thing I do got to say about this is it leaves that odory smell like from a cat room, cat litter box. So the next time you're out in the garage and you're laying on your back working on your truck, all that odory stuff goes into your sweater. So if your wife catches you for as being the cheating kind, you might be in a world of hurt. So if you are that type or you might have that type and you really depend on your better half, you might not want to use this stuff. You might want to stick with the oil dry. Let me give you a glance at how it looks. Now you can see I rubbed it in there. Bring it back. You remember that puddle before? We just about got this all cleaned up. Now I can lay on the floor again where my real home is. enough shenanigans for one day I can't wait to get these aluminum heads installed on the 355 good camshaft in there and go racing now I had a long conversation with Jegs and it came down to the conclusion that I'm just gonna order the eBay kit for these heads and so I'm going to call this the eBay, eBay 355, and we're going to just see how it does. I mean, hell, it might run all season. I might blow it up in the first pass. Who cares? It's not like I'm into it five, six thousand bucks. You know, I think I'll be into it maybe eleven, twelve hundred bucks total when it's all said and done. Because I still got to buy a carburetor, and if you got recommendations for a carburetor for a 355, uh, comment that down below. Uh, and I still got to buy a camshaft so uh, all the specs on these heads says it can handle like 600 lift and, and they flow 200 cc's and they're 65 cc chambers so I'm I'm excited to give them a go because if these do work good then that means that it's gonna give a lot more people the opportunity to actually go racing and not be into it up to their elbows $20,000 putting parts on credit cards and everything else. Remember, this build is paid for in cash. It's not, I'm not taking out loans to do this stuff. So, uh, yeah. If you could like, subscribe, follow, share, whatever you want to call it. Because uh, we got the green block that we're going to do the eBay 350. And then we got the aluminum block aluminum block the silver block that's going to be later become a uh, probably a 383 stroker and that might have a turbo with it or a supercharger maybe a pro charger i don't know it's all up we'll see what happens when we get there but uh the transmission should be coming back here in the next week or two and then it's going to be fabbing up the trans mount or modifying my current trans mount uh, I read on Google, Google says that there's only like a one inch difference between the length of uh, the 700R4 and the Turbo 400 transmission. So I think the Turbo 400 is like one inch longer. And I'm going to just modify my trans cross member for it and make some brackets. I own a welder, so I think I can do that. Um, and then it's going to be... Looking up for a Ford Explorer 8.8 .8 rear end, hopefully one that's got limited slip in it or a posi track. 
Uh, they're out there. I was looking up on car park today and I've found a few of them around. I got to call on them, see how much they want for them at the wrecking yard. But, uh, from what I was, I read a really good article that somebody wrote up. And if you ever watched this, thank you for that article because it made a hell of a lot of sense. Uh, but like the pinholes where the axle lines up is only like a quarter inch off. So with that, then we're going to be probably be getting, uh, some, it is a little bit longer. So with that, I was thinking with some just plus two uh, offset or positive two inch offset wheels for it and uh, then some drag radials. Also comment down below if you got some drag radials that you guys like or that are that grip good. So anyway with that we're going to close this video out. Uh, hopefully soon you'll see me assembling the uh, eBay aluminum heads. Catch you later.